What's going on guys, my name is 8 Preston, and welcome to the first game battles of Hedgehog Month. Now this game battles, as you can tell by the fresh new intro that I've got for the game battle series, which I'm quite pleased with, I think it just needs a few tweaks off, is going to be Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing vs Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed. Now the reason why I'm talking about this instead of for say Sonic Unleashed vs Sonic Generations is because I see those two games covered enough on YouTube at the point where it's no secret the internet's opinions nor mine but I may do this in the future of the series or maybe some point in the future of my channel but for now we're going to stick with this because I thought it would be quite fitting because I recently did a video about the Sonic Racing games and because I said that I somewhat prefer Sonic and All Stars Racing over Transform which is something that raised quite a few people's eyebrows that I know because a lot of people prefer Transformed but again it's my opinion but in this video we're going to talk about Sonic and All Stars Racing Transformed and Sonic and All Stars Racing for the PlayStation 3 now can I just say this real quickly before the video starts I know uh, I mentioned Sonic and All Stars Racing uh, the original that hit that's DS port and I completely forgot that Sonic and All Stars Racing Transformed had a 3DS version to it so that's why I didn't talk about it, but regardless, without further ado, welcome to my first ever game battles of Hedgehog Month, and certainly not the last. Let's talk about Sonic and All Stars Racing Transformed vs Sonic and Sega All Stars Racing. Okay, so first we're going to talk about Sonic and Sega All Stars Racing. Now, why do I have more appreciation for this game over Transformed? Well, probably because I have more nostalgia for this game. When I first owned this game myself, I owned it on the DS, so I didn't have the console version and I would di would not be able to experience the console version for uh, roughly a year or two after. But my first experience with the console version is when I still have my PS2, but I went round to my auntie's house one day uh, and she had a PS3 at the time and it had this game on it, so she asked me if I wanted to have a go on it and I of course said yes, being the Sonic fanboy that I am. And we played it and we had a blast and I fell in love with this game. I absolutely adore Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed. Um, sorry, wrong game. Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing. It's it's really uh, difficult to say the two names and just keep altering between them. Like, honestly, try it yourself. It's, it's kind of awkward. But anyways, um, this game's pros. It, it runs absolutely beautifully. Now, on the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360, it doesn't run all that great, especially in the multiplayer mode. On, the, on that version of the game, it runs pretty, pretty slow. But on the PC version, if you've got a good enough PC, your game will be running at a smooth, buttery 60 frames per second. Even on multiplayer mode, which just feels absolutely... Oh, it feels nice. Just to have a racing experience feel that smooth is just probably one of the most satisfying things about the game, to be fair. Then, after that, let's talk about our character selection. In this game, you have character the base starters of Sonic, Shadow, Amy, um, I think Knuckles is unlo is an unlockable character in this game. You got Samba de Amigo, Super Monkey Balls, I I and I Dr. Eggman I think. Now the reason the reason why you only start with a small roster similar to what you do in Super Smash Brothers is because this game has a unlock system where you have to play the multiplayer and the campaign to unlock coins to spend in the Sega shop as it's called I believe and you can unlock other characters from there, other stages and the songs from the stages which is quite a nice touch to be honest if you can't get the soundtrack for the game anywhere else and you just want to jam out to the tunes similar to how Sonic Heroes and Shadow the Hedgehog had in their main menu but the stages I briefly mentioned that you can buy some in the shop and the ones that you can buy are fantastic one of my favourites being the Seaside Hill inspired stage, I forgot what it's called but it's inspired by Seaside Hill and Ocean Palace from Sonic Heroes and it's just such a blast to play. There's one part where you go through this big tube and there's like a whale that goes past. You can feel the whale, like the vibration from the whale's um, song play, like, like got on your controller. It feels really satisfying. Now for a 360 PS3 title, it looks great on the console. But on the PC, if you've got a good graphics card, like a GTX 1080 or a Titan X, if you, you know, decided to spend that much money on a graphics card, which if you did, God help. But if you own a, a good graphics card on your PC, this game looks really fucking gorgeous for the time it was released in. Now, also, it's kind of nice to see that there's a, a reference to these Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog when if you start a race and the loading times take a while it says Sonic says that's a nice reference and also Knights is the person that waves the waves you at the start of the race which is kinda nice but this game feels like one big reference more than an actual racing game to be fair with you 
because yes, it's about Sega characters and Sonic the Hedgehog of course, but at the same time it features a lot of tracks and characters from these franchises that you may not have even knew existed for example, because most people know Sega for Sonic, not Alex the Kid, and when they found out Alex the Kid was a Sega character they was like, oh, I think I know who this guy is. And I'll, I'll be honest, I didn't know Sega was responsible for anything other than Sonic and House of the Dead at the time. Which was an arcade shooter that you could find in something like Blackpool Arcades. Which if you guys aren't from the UK and you don't know where Blackpool is, it's close to my, my hometown slash city. And it's, um, it's full of arcades and all these bright flashy places. Got firework shows every now and then. It's a, it's a really nice place to go chill out and waste your money if you feel like gambling. But at the same time, it's a decent city, if not a little bit scruffy sometimes. Not to offend anyone who lives in Blackpool, if you are actually watching this video, I'm just saying it it can be a little messy in some parts. Plot? Parts, sorry. But anyways, back on track. Sonic and, All so Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing, keep forgetting about that. Uh, the gameplay. Now, while the gameplay doesn't usually feel all that fresh in terms of the Grand Prix, because it's just a couple of new courses, the game controls absolutely fantastically. I didn't expect this because judging by Sonic R and Sonic Drift 1 and 2, you wouldn't think the Sonic Racing games would have improved this much, but yes, these these games are absolutely fantastic as I mentioned in my Sonic Racing games video. And the reason why these games are just really good is because not only are its lineup of characters really fun and bouncy to play as, but the game controls really, really smoothly. Like, you could play as any character and feel like the control is not affected in any way. Now my favourite character is Shadow in the game because not only is Shadow the Hedgehog my favourite Sonic the Hedgehog character and I really couldn't care about all the other franchises present in this game other than Street Fighter but that's unlockable with coins which does take a while to get sometimes. Um, Shadow's bike, he uses the bike from Shadow the Hedgehog and for some reason it has the, uh, the symbol, the logo from the Black Aliens from Shadow the Hedgehog on it. Like on the front cover of Shadow the Hedgehog, it's got that like red spine thing on it. That's not the logo for Shadow, everyone. That's the logo for the Black Arms, which is kind of an odd design choice, really, because like why would an alien race have a human motorcycle aboard the spaceship thing? Like it doesn't make much sense to be honest. And how did Shadow steal it? But that small note aside, um, yeah, my favorite character was Shadow the Hedgehog in the game, hands down. I had the most playtime with him. And he just felt really, really nice to control. He felt really fast as well once you knew how to master him. And it was just a, it was a, it was a great time, really. But now I want to talk about the game's main gimmick, the All-Star move. Now, basically what this is, it's a special move that allows you to get back in the game and come to first place. Similar to the the 8 in Mario Kart 8, or the, uh, the Power Star, or the Bullet Bill in Mario Kart. Which, if you didn't know, in Mario Kart, there's a Bullet Bill, which turns you into a Bullet Bill. And it zips you through... Um, the stage for roughly five to ten seconds depending on how far back you are and this could take you from eighth place to like third place if you can control yourself well after coming out of the transformation which is really helpful but it's kind of rare to get sometimes because it feels like the AI has more chance of getting it than you do which is bullshit but um, the old star move in this game it's different for every character other than Sonic and Shadow who both use their super forms to fly through the stage like a bullet bill but throw out attacks at the other players now this is one thing that I love about this game, the All-Star move. Now don't get me wrong, this did return in All-Stars Racing Transformed, but I will talk about them when we talk about that game. The reason why this game's All-Stars are really good and I love them is because not only do they reference one of the character's main abilities in the respected franchise, but also the All-Star just feels really nice to use, like Sonic and Shadow have their super forms, Tails Tornado turns into the Cyclone, Knuckles takes the Master Emeralds and uses that for a speed boost and a power attack. Um, Samba de Amigo, I think he uses his train or his maracas, one of the two, I'll get confused. Eggman unleashes a missile barrage as his uh, big, like, off-roader thing. He's, I don't know what he drives, to be honest. But whatever he drives, it turns into a the Eggmobile and it gets, um, it gets rockets to fire at people. So, while we're on the subject of the rockets, let's talk about the items in this game. They're not very good, I'll be honest. Now you've got the um, the pylon, which is essentially just the banana. You've got the speed shoe, which is the same as a mushroom. You've got the rocket, which is the same as a red shell. You've got the bomb, which is similar to a bob bomb, but it, it acts like a green shell and a bob bomb fused. You've got the boxing glove, which is more like a green shell. 
and then you've got the rainbow, which acts like the blooper, which essentially just, you know, like blurs your vision. You know how the blooper in Mario Kart, it inks up your screen. This one just makes your screen go all rainbowy, so it's a little bit harder to see. The star, it, if it hits you, your screen gets reversed and your controls get inverted. So if you get hit by that, it's going to be a bitch to recover from, because I have a hard time with it. But you've then also got this big, this big blue missile thing, which essentially just acts as a, a remote bomb and which you send forward and then you press the item button to detonate it when you feel it's close enough to someone else which is difficult to get a shot with if you don't pay attention to the map at the top of the screen which isn't really a map it's more of a who's what who's were type of meter and then you've also got the shield which acts like the, uh, the spinning red shells in Mario Kart but a whole lot more useful and there's also the horn I never really understood the use of it unless you're really close to someone but I'm not complaining because it's a fun item to use nevertheless. Also, this game had a shit ton of merchandise to go behind its back. I got the Shadow and the Sonic Remote Control car for it, and also the smaller Meccano figures with the Meccano track to it, and it's pretty fun, I'll be honest. Now, this game was obviously on the PC, the 360, the PS3, and also the Wii. Now, the 360 version of the game did get Banjo-Kazooie as a DLC playable character, which I thought was a nice inclusion. But us PS3 players, we got left in the dust. I don't think the PC got anything extra, and I can't remember what the Wii got, but us PS3 players, we didn't get anything because apparently Sega doesn't like the PS3. But regardless to that, Sonic and All-Stars Racing is a fantastic game, I'll be honest. And we haven't even touched upon the mission mode yet, so I'll talk about that real quick. Alright, so let's really quickly talk about the missions. So what these are, these are extra challenges that allow more replayability for the game. So instead of doing the regular, you know, the Grand Prix or the single races or the time trials, you get to play as a set character and you have to complete a certain objective, whether that be beat your opponent to the goal and um, if you get do it in a certain amount of time, you get like double A AA or triple A. Triple A is the best, I believe. Um, I, I'm more than sure it's triple A, not double A. But um, why are Amy's eyes blinking? That's something that's always confused me about this end screen on PC. But uh, other than that... You get to play as a character that the uh, the game gives you, and once you beat the mission, you can go straight to the next one, which can either be something like do a, do a certain amount of drifting, do a go through a certain amount of rings, complete the course in a certain amount of time, don't be last place. It's, there's a wide variety, and there's 50 of them. Now, that might sound like it gets really boring and repetitive, but can I be honest with you? These missions are really fun. They are actually fun. And to get the max rank, I don't know. Where's my audio cut out? Um, hello? Where's my audio? Never, never mind, but anyways. Um, continuing with that audio for a second. Oh, there we go. No, it's back now. Never mind. But anyways, the... It's not hard to get to play on these missions, I'll be honest. But coming... Oh, there it goes again. But coming back to these missions to get the, um the higher rank, it doesn't feel old and they always feel fresh. These missions are a lot of fun and it just adds more replayability to the game. It just makes it overall a lot more fun. Same thing goes with the DS version as well. So we've done enough talking and enough praising this game for once. Let's talk about the game's cons now. This game's cons. It's not very expansive with what you can do outside of the main gameplay and the multiplayer, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, and also that the PS3 version didn't get any extras, but that's about it really. I can't think of anything else. So, moving on to Sonic and Sega, oh, no, not Sega, Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed. Now, let's talk about everyone's favourite game to love. Sonic and Sega, all, not Sega, Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed. Now, this game, I'll admit, it is really fucking fun. And the range of characters is a lot bigger and a lot more expansive than it is on the original game. Because not only this time do you get to play as Knight instead of... Uh, Knights being the person that wears the checkered flag. You also get to play as Metal Sonic, Wreck-It Ralph of all people, Football Manager. You also get to play as the older characters again, but with uh, different vehicles. You also get to play as the Yogg's cast as well, which is a nice little DLC. You also get to play as the, the Team Fortress 2 team. And someone else from some other game, I forgot his name, some sort of ninja. Uh, but he's, he's not very good, to be honest. But the character roster in this game is a lot bigger than the previous game. And also the graphics in this game, good lord, even on a console and on a PC, this game looks fucking fantastic. Which is something that Sonic um, Sonic Team Racing, Team Sonic Racing, is lacking in my opinion. 
that, judging by what I've seen of Team Sonic Racing so far, the graphics for a PS4 title, they don't look very good compared to this title, which is very odd. Same thing can be said for Sonic Forces. Now, some levels of Sonic Forces look really nice, but Generations and Unleashed on the previous console look so much better than Forces, which is something that really slows Forces down for me. The fact that it didn't take full advantage of the PS4's and Xbox One's capabilities, which is something that Generations and Unleashed did on the PS3 and 360, even the PC for that matter. Now, this game's a lot more expensive than the first game because not only is there a world tour mode, but there's also different Grand Prix you can do. The mission modes are not available anymore which because they essentially got replaced with the world tour, which I, I'll be honest, I do prefer the world tour, but it can get a little bit uh, repetitive at times and really annoying. But now, what you get to do is you can play your characters, you can level them up, give them different uh, mods for their vehicles, which always feel nice to unlock and to and to play as them. It's pretty cool actually. But once you complete the world tour on a certain difficulty, you also get to um, replay them on S rank difficulty for an extra star, which is required to get full stars and to unlock everything in the game. Which is yes, it adds to replayability, but it does get a little frustrating at times. But now that we've talked about the characters and all that, let's talk about the stages. Now, the stages in this game, in my opinion, are so much better than the stages from the previous game. Because not only are there more um, stages from other franchises except Sonic the Hedgehog, which feel fun, because, I'll be honest, again, I love Sonic compared to all the other franchises in the Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed and Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing. I prefer the Sonic stages in the first game because they feel fresh, and again, I love Sonic compared to the other franchises. But in this game, the other franchises' stages are even better than the Sonic stages in this game, which is something that I had to adjust to at first because I I thought, oh no, I won't play these because I'm judging by the last game, but these are really good. Like, I'm shocked, but uh, the control. This is probably the nicest feeling I've ever had playing a racing game. It feels absolutely amazing. Because not only is the drifting super responsive, super sliding, super fun to use, but also, even if you've got a vehicle that looks like it won't control well, or if you've got certain handling type on your character, like, honest to god, it just handles so well, and I can't give Sega enough credit and Sumo for this, because this this game controls like an absolute... No, it's... I can't describe it. It's, it controls like you'd expect it to but a lot better. That's oh, the only way I can describe it. Now, there's no need to talk about the music tracks, but I'm going to give him a brief mention in saying that this soundtrack is absolutely amazing, and it is definitely something you should give a listen to in your, in your spare time if you want to listen to a good gaming soundtrack. Uh, but now that we've done that, let's talk about this game's main gimmick, the transforming, which Mario Kart 7 can kiss its ass, because not only did this the, uh, this game take the idea of the transforming from uh, boat to uh, to car before Mario Kart 7. It just didn't um, come out b uh, before you know Mario Kart 7 because it got delayed or something. And Mario Kart 7 came out first, and Sega got shit for it because apparently they copied Nintendo. Which no, they didn't, guys. Like all you Nintendo fanboys, can you just calm down and give this game some slack? But anyways. Um, yeah, as I was saying, it's it's really, really fun, the transformation sequences. My favourite is still the car, because it feels super nice, but the plane, it's really nice to control. Doing barrel rolls in, it feels really responsive and really cool. The drifting doesn't feel very nice, I will admit. The boats feel really responsive and nice, if not a bit too slippery sometimes, which doesn't necessarily feel too comfortable to control. But it's bearable, you know, I, I can easily get used to it and many people didn't really complain about it either because it's not a difficult thing to adjust to. But getting... But one thing that this game offers for a lot more replayability is its sticker collection. Which allows you to uh, get more stickers for your Sega Miles license to improve it and customise it to your likings essentially. Which is something really cool about the game that I really do appreciate. But... Anyways, other than that, uh, it's a really solid sequel to a really solid game in the start. So deciding between the two is going to be a really difficult decision for many people. And it was really difficult for me as well. Upon writing this conclusion, 
is extremely difficult to judge between these two games which is the better one and which is you know the top tier game because they're both fantastic they both control well they both look great you know they run really well apart from on the ps3 with its multiplayer which is very 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 choppy with its frame rate sometimes but um, we're talking about the pc versions here because this is the the version that's on screen that's playing at the minute but it's 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 a really difficult decision to decide between these two because they are both extremely brilliant games full of extremely noticeable references to other franchises it's a lot of fun there's a lot of replayability to it but in my opinion the winner of the verses between Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed and Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing is indeed Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing. In my opinion, this is the superior game. Not, And that's not just my nostalgia talking, which, well, I, actually it kind of is because I do have a lot of nostalgia for this game. But I find myself revisiting this game more times than needed than Sonic and, Se Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed. Now, is that because of this game's uh, stages, roster, or whatever? No. I just find it a tiny little bit more fun. Because the character vehicles all feel different. And they just feel different to use as well. Which is something really nice. And not only did this game introduce me to the racing franchise in general. Like a wider, um, you know, racing game. It, I have a, a lot of fun with it. And it's mission mode as well. I love this game's mission mode, it's something I find myself revisiting more times than necessary simply because I just have a lot of fun with it. And other challenges as well present in the game that allow you to unlock different things to your Sega Miles license which are present in uh, the other game as well. They just feel a lot more rewarding than for say the other game but do I think this version of Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing is the best? No. Let me explain why. I still believe the best version of this game is the DS counterpart, simply because not only is it a fantastic time, but for a DS game it runs super smooth, the The retro sounding soundtrack of the original game soundtrack is just fantastic, especially the Final Fortress version, it just sounds amazing in my opinion. It controls extremely well, especially on a D-pad, but it's best played on a 3DS's circle pad in my opinion. Uh, the character roster is the same for the most part and it still feels a lot fresh for some reason. The vehicles also feel a lot different and more fresh half the time, the sound effects are nice. But the one thing that encourages me to play this game more is the differences between the Sega Miles license. And the only difference I have to, to mention to be honest is the fact that in this game instead of collecting stickers for your license you gain points for it to make it different colours whilst also adding your own customizations to it. And trying to get the max score while getting your last, your platinum license is such a rewarding feeling once it's completed, which I did eventually, it took me a long time to do. And it's just a really rewarding feel, in my opinion. And also, as well, um, the journey to it is really fun as well. There's a lot of challenges in this game in comparison to the console counterpart, and they feel a lot more fun. But either way, they're both the same game, but for some reason, in my heart, the DS version holds up a lot better than the console version. I don't know why, and I really can't explain why either, but I always revisit this version instead of the console and PC version if I get the opportunity to put it inside of my original DS again, if I can dig it out from somewhere, if I actually manage to do that, because it's just sat on my shelf at the minute, just collecting dust. And I'm still trying to dig out my old DS, and while I can play this on the uh, 3DS, you may be saying, my 3DS for some reason doesn't have support for a regular DS game, which I will need to fix, but I think I deleted some software on accident, but that's my mistake. But regardless, thank you so much for watching this video of Hedgehog Month, and thank you for watching the first game battles of Hedgehog Month in general. Now, I will continue doing um, game battles in the future, don't worry, the series isn't going to go anywhere, and it's not an exclusive to Hedgehog Month anymore, don't worry. And also, I will be using the new intro that was shown in this video, instead of just having to introduce the video with a clip in the background and saying, Hey guys, game battles! You know, I'm, I'm going to keep with this fire intro thing. Because I think it was really cool and it took me a while to do. So I'm going to keep using it for everything else. Uh, not only am I like, 
if let's say if I wanted to do uh, game battles on Mario 64 versus Mario Odyssey, which I have planned, I will have the thing spiraling around and say Mario 64, then a big versus, then Mario Odyssey, fade to black, game battles. I will keep that. Don't worry. It's it's not it's now a staple for the game battles intro. And as you notice as well, Honest Reviews got a new intro. It's not new to be honest. It got it. It's new intro a while ago. But instead of doing a two-star thing coming to the game's logo with a, a watermark in the bottom right, it's now some like floaty trail underwater that eventually splashes out the game's logo. And spoiler alert for Hedgehog Month here, but I have a Ice Reviews pre-record on a certain game that a lot of people hate, but a, a few people really like. No, it's not Sonic 06. That's for another day. I really don't know if I'm going to do it or not yet, but only time will tell. Thank you so much for watching Game Battles on Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing vs Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed. I've been 8-Bit Preston, happy Hedgehog Month everyone, and I'll see you all in the next video of mine. Peace out everyone and take care.